Okay, welcome everybody to the Got Milk class, which after we're doing Got Milk and Cookies tonight, because you can't really have milk um, So and we're going to have four, three other teachers besides me tonight, so we'll be doing a lot of quick changes, and hopefully you'll learn a lot of interesting information that you didn't know about. All right, let me switch over here. Um, President Hinckley said, I am satisfied that the father of us all does not wish his children to walk in poverty. He wants them to have comforts and some of the good things of the earth. In the Old Testament, he speaks of a land flowing with milk and honey, of the fatlings of the flock, and of other things which indicate that he would have his children properly fed and clothed and sheltered, enjoying the comforts that come of the earth. So tonight we're gonna we're gonna concentrate a little bit on the milk and honey part, or at least the milk and sugar part of it. The, the good things of part of our food storage. Um, powdered milk in the olden days sort of had this reaction, if you mentioned powdered milk to people, where they get grimace because the powdered milk in the olden days was pretty bad. It really tasted like not good chalk. And, um, but milk has really improved. And later on tonight, you're gonna get to taste four different kinds of powdered milk, so you can see that they have improved. And we're gonna talk a little bit about the differences in them. Okay. Um, there's new processing methods which make which makes it easier to make powdered milk and it also makes it a lot better tasting. And it's um, really good for long-term food stores. In fact, just even not very long ago, just 10 years ago, milk only stored for about two years. Now it stores for 20. So way much better processes than it as long as you're not storing poorly, it tastes good. Okay, milk, powdered milk is used in a lot of different ways on the shelf. You can buy it in mixes. Pancake mix, you just add water to, has powdered milk added to it. A lot of powdered milk has vitamin A and vitamin D added to it. Um, powdered milk, the one bad thing about powdered milk is if you store it where it gets hot, it will greatly change the taste of your milk. And so milk is one of the things you're going to want to think about storing in your house where it stays cooler, unless of course you have a basement, um, where it stays cooler so that it doesn't get an off taste to it. Um, you can use it in oatmeal, you know, in cereals, and in making yogurt, which you're going to learn about tonight, and in making cheese which we're not, I didn't make cheese this year from powdered milk, but you can make cheese from powdered milk, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. All right, so what are some advantages to using powdered milk? You might just think it's just easier just to go buy milk on the shelf, but there really are some advantages, especially as your children start grow, uh, leaving the nest and you have less and less people at home that are drinking milk. Sometimes you find that your milk goes bad before you go through it all, so there's some um, Advantages number one, you don't have to refrigerate it until you're going to be using it, or unless there's leftovers. You, um, it's really good for long-term storage. You only have to make what you need, so you don't have to make a whole gallon of milk. You can just make a quarter, a quarter cup of milk if that's all you need for whatever you're making. And it um, now comes in non-fat, which if you're you know, trying to lose weight, it's good. And non-fat powdered milk stores a lot longer than powdered milk, whole powdered milk, and also it, you can, it's really easy to measure and pour, especially if you're using instant milk. It just dissolves really instantly in cold water. All right, so what are some hints for making good tasting powdered milk? Number one, when you first, if you want to start incorporating powdered milk into your daily usage and your family is big milk drinkers, lots of times you can mix it half and half with whole milk or 2%. And that, and the taste will balance out the powdered milk until your family gets used to drinking it. I have one friend that her kids only will drink powdered milk now because they've been doing it for a while and they don't like the taste of regular milk anymore. Um, if you mix it up really well, then and and especially adding air into it, it gives it a better taste. If you refrigerate it, like make it the night before, let it refrigerate all night long before you drink it. It also um, absorbs better into the water so it tastes better and it, just by pouring it back and forth you can aerate it that gives it a better taste and you also can add a little bit of sugar or a little bit of vanilla to it and it will give it a little bit better taste too so those are just some hints to make it taste a little bit better if you don't like the taste of it my family doesn't really drink powder drink milk anyway we just use it in um, cooking 
so it's not that big of a deal. So what are some different types of powdered milk? You may have heard these and not really known what the difference is. So hopefully after today you'll go home, you'll know what the difference between regular milk and instant milk is and why you might want to get one over the other. So the one that's up here is the one that comes from the Bishop's Storehouse. It is a regular or a non-instant powdered milk. There's very few companies that sell non-instant powdered milk. Walton's and the church are really the only two that I know about. Everybody else sells instant. The stuff you get at the grocery store or at Costco or any of those kinds of places is an instant powdered milk. And there also are milk alternatives like Morning Moo, which I used to really recommend because I thought it was the best powdered milk. It is um, part dairy, part um, soy, but you cannot make yogurt and cheese and stuff with it. So it's only limited just to drinking. And if you read the fine print of like what is actually in it, it's really not very healthy for you. So really not the best kind of milk to have in your storage. Um, you also can get chocolate milk, which um, has a lot of sugar in it and not a lot of nutrition to it. So really, it's really better just to store regular powdered milk and chocolate if you want to make chocolate milk. You can get whole powdered milk. It, Nestle makes one, and somebody was just telling me that it's actually cheaper than the, than the um, non-fat powdered milk, but it's not going to store as long, so keep that in mind. And, what's this one? Oh, you can get powdered buttermilk. And I don't know why I gave you regular, but I could have given you a picture of powdered and didn't, but you can get powdered buttermilk also. All right, so some milk alternatives. For those of you that can't have dairy, yeah. Yes, and we're going to talk about that. She asked, not a problem. She asked if there was a difference between the regular and the instant, and you know, other than just one's regular, other than how you mix it. And yes, there is, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Okay, so you can get rice milk, soy milk, and goat milk, either in liquid form that are shelf stable, or all of them now also come in powdered forms. So I found them all on the internet. If you if you have people in your family that can't have regular dairy, those are available um, places. So look for them. So how much and what to store? Um, the guidelines now are 16 pounds of powdered milk. In 1982, it was 85 pounds of powdered milk. This is per person. And before I think it was 1970. Before that, it was 100 pounds of powdered milk. I can't even imagine what you do with that much powdered milk. That is a lot of powdered milk. And powdered milk was probably one of the most expensive parts of basic food storage. So what they did was they lowered the amount of powdered milk. It's only, it only is enough for one cup of milk, one eight ounce cup of milk per person for, for each day. So if you have, you know, children or pregnant people, you're going to want to have more than that in your storage. And pregnant people or children, I think I'm children. children. You're going to want to store triple that amount. So it's about, it works out to about a case per person, four to six cans per person to get that 16 pounds. If you are have bigger milk drinkers in your family, then you're going to want to store a little bit more than that too. And what you do find, um, we'll talk a little bit more about this, but one of the answers to the question about between regular and instant is that there's a lot less milk in a can of instant milk than there is in a can of regular milk. So you can make like four gallons of milk in a regular can of milk and only two and a half gallons with instant. You need a lot more powder to make it with the instant. Okay, so storing milk. We talked a little bit about the heat, but also humidity and air and light and temperature all affect how your milk is going to taste. So that means if you have a number 10 can of milk, it's nice and light. Mm -hmm. um, a number 10 can of milk, once you've opened it and you've taken the seal off, these, do, these kind of lids do not keep it airtight. So we live in an area that doesn't have very much humidity, so it doesn't affect our milk that much. But if you live in an area where you do have high humidity, you'll notice that your milk will taste, start tasting funny pretty quickly. So in those cases, you'll either want to repackage it or use it up pretty fast. Okay. So we talked about storing it in the house. Okay. okay, so ways to use milk. Obviously, you can drink milk. That's the basic way. All these different. You also can make mixes. And tonight, we're going to talk about a, um, 
I'm going to make a white sauce mix with it and show you how easy that is and how good it tastes and you can make a lot of different things with that. There's a lot of mixes that you can make from powdered milk, cocoa mix, you can make um, cheese sauce mixes, Alfredo mixes, and um, white sauce mixes. Those are all just some basic mixes that, are gonna, that you can make with powdered milk. And it saves a lot of time and a lot of money if you do that. You also can make family favorites using powdered milk. We tonight are going to have try two different kinds of homemade ice cream made from powdered milk and canned milk. And so I just took my original family recipe that my grandmother made and converted it. Instead of using half and half and whole milk, I used powdered milk and canned milk. And you'll see, it tastes pretty good. You would be happy with it. So those are all my conversions. Sorry, this is not working very well. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about making some products from powdered milk. You can actually make yogurt and sour cream and cream cheese from powdered milk. And it's the same process for all three. The only difference is how long you let it drain. The longer you let it drain, the thicker it gets that makes a different kind of cheese. So we're going to go through how to do each of those really quickly. I'm going to be really quickly. Yeah. yeah. What kind of instant milk or are, are you using instant milk or they're just plain dry? You can use regular or instant, but if you use instant, you have to use twice as much. So the recipes that you'll be getting in your recipe, you know, when I email out the recipe, so you have a recipe in your thing right now. Yeah. I think it is using regular milk. If you use instant, you would double the amount of milk that you use. Okay? Alright. And you cannot use, remember, no morning moo, no, no milk alternatives. You have to use a real milk product. In order to do that. So to make yogurt, you just take water, you mix in your powdered milk to it, you bring it to, um, you heat it up till it gets to 105 degrees, and you're stirring it while you do that, and then you add in, Emily, how much? A fourth of a cup of, um, of yogurt, plain yogurt that has live cultures. Okay, there's the one that I use is Mountain High. I like that brand because it has five different live cultures in it, so it's really healthy. Some of the other ones only have one. But you want it to have contained live cultures. That's what makes your yogurt. So you just use a quarter cup, and you are going to mix a little bit of the hot mixture in with it until it warms it up, and then add it into the rest of your, yes? What you do for it wasn't for then you don't make yogurt, or you find someone that had yogurt, and you can just all make starters from that. Or you, you also can get or you powdered starter. Yeah, or you store. Yeah, you can you can dehydrate yogurt and make starter. Can you not just use regular culture? Yogurt culture? Well, that's probably what we're talking about. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Instead of using the. You could. I don't have the recipe for that, so I don't know how to do oh, that. Oh, okay. But, but you probably can do that. Yeah, because I've made yogurt with milk and yogurt culture and in a machine. Yeah, so you don't even need a machine. Yeah. We have fancy ways of doing it, huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so <coughs> you mix the yogurt, the warmed up yogurt mixture back into your 105 degree milk um, that's in your pan and then just pour it into your jars. And then you take your jars and you either put them, you can do it in a crock pot, you can do it in, um, there's, these are out of order, or you can put them, Emily and I, we did ours in icebox ovens. You just put your jars in there with one jar of boiling water just to keep it warm and close it all up for six hours and it makes beautiful yogurt. Or you can even do it in a dehydrator. So what the idea is you want to keep it at a low temperature between I forgot how it's 80 and 115 or something degrees for six to eight hours and it will turn into a yogurt. And then you can um, flavor it or do whatever you want with it. And if you just save a quarter cup of that, and that, that now becomes your starter to make your next batch. So it's very cheap to do it that way. It's much cheaper than buying yogurt off the shelf and healthier because it doesn't have any extra things in it. So to take that and turn it into sour cream, all you do is Pour it either, now last year I didn't, I wasn't thinking, and I just used, um, you can use 
like a couple layers of cheesecloth, but it all sticks to that, so I didn't really like that. I use paper towel. I just lined a um, strainer with paper towels, and then you just pour your yogurt in it. Um, this year, I realized that I could use a coffee filter, which are much cheaper and much easier to use, and just line my thing with it. You put your yogurt in it, and then you just let it sit, and you'll notice in that picture that the water is dripping out, and it's thickening it up to make sour cream. Now, if you don't want it to be really sour tasting, because yogurt's a little more sour tasting than, you know, normal, you would do it in or put it in the refrigerator. It keeps it, you know, it keeps it from getting less sour. So just let it drip in the fridge instead of, instead of out on the counter. And then in how many hours, oh, you didn't make it. I forgot how many hours. It's, I think you let it sit for four to six hours and it will get thick enough to be sour cream. Now, by doing that, you have now taken to make to take two pints of sour of yogurt. You're going to end up with one pint of sour cream. Okay, so now I've in essence doubled the amount of milk I've used to make sour cream. And every time you go down a level, you get you have what you you're getting out of it. Okay, so cream cheese. It's the exact same way we did sour cream. You're just going to let it sit longer. You don't need to refrigerate. You do once it's done to store it. You would refrigerate it, but when it's draining, you don't does not have to be in the fridge. Yeah. Okay, so when you're making the yogurt, uh huh, in the crock pot. Yes. And you put it in the jar. Yes. Okay. Then you put water in the pot. Put some water in the bottom of the crock pot. And you just put it on low. Yes. And you love it. Yes. Okay. I don't. There's um. There's a lady on, uh, I think she's, I don't know, I always forget which website she is. She's, I think, foodstoragemadeeasy.net. She does hers just in her crock pot. She doesn't put it in jars. So she just dumps everything in her crock pot and makes it in there. So that's really easy too. She has a video on there how to walk, how to do it. Okay, so to do cream cheese, like I said, it's just the same way you did the sour cream, but you're just going to let it drain longer. And then you'll have sour cream. So now we've gone from two pints of yogurt to one pint of sour cream to a half a pint of cream cheese. Okay, isn't that fun? Okay, now simple cheese. And I did this for the class two years ago when I did it. And in a minute, I'm going to tell you why I didn't do it again. <laughs> okay, so to make it, you're just going to bring your, you're going to make your milk. You're going to add in an acid, so it could be lemon juice or vinegar or something. You also can get rennet to do it. And you add it in, and what it does is it makes curds and whey. It separates your milk into curds and whey. And so then you're going to drain off the whey, which you can use in making bread. It's a really good way to make bread. And you're going to put it in. This is cheesecloth. She's just taken all the curds clumped it up into the cheesecloth, tied it off, and she's just hanging it, and it drips, and all the liquid comes out, and it makes like a mozzarella cheese. Yeah? Can you make your curds and whey? Uh-huh. Does that have to be a whole milk, or can you use a milk bath? No, you can use non bath It just has to be real milk. It can't be the milk substitute stuff. It doesn't work. So that's a picture of my mozzarella cheese I made last year. Yeah? What's the approximate ratio of milk to lemon juice? Uh, it's in your, it's in, it'll be in the handout that you get. I don't remember. In the handout, you have step-by-step -step future instructions with how much of everything to use. Okay, so this is what I found out when I did the class two years ago. This was a big eye-opener to me. If you take a number 10 can, okay, a number 10 can of milk, I could make um, 60 cups of milk from this. But I would only get 28 cups of yogurt out of that. And 14 cups of sour cream, 7 cups of cream cheese, and 4 cups of cheese. So it takes a whole number 10 can to make 4 cups of cheese. That is a lot of milk to make cheese. So what I've discovered, and I don't know if I did it on here, um, is that there are, are, all, are alternatives to that. Freeze-dried cheese. This, I forgot how much this has in it, but this has
has Okay, this has a lot of cheese in this, and this is real mozzarella cheese that was shredded and freeze dried. I'm going to use it just like you use regular mozzarella cheese, and it's um, much cheaper to do this way. You can get this on sale for about $25, and I don't remember how many cups this has in it, but it has a lot more than four cups in it, and this now is running about $14 a can. So for Two, you know, two cans of this, I would only get eight cups of cheese, and this is much more than that. And a lot less waste. You don't need as much water, you don't need the time, and you still can have cheese. So if I was going to have cheese, this is what I would do with my food storage. Or well, this is what I've done after doing that class last year. I still, I do not like the powdered sour cream. You can buy powdered sour cream. I don't like it. I would much rather make sour cream if I needed to have sour cream. It's not as much of a waste making sour cream as it is the cheese. So, any questions with any of that? Okay, I think we're almost done. Okay, so, oh, okay, this is the story. I'm not going to tell you the story. Okay, I'm going to skip this. Okay, we're going to move on now because we talked all about the milk. Did you understand all the, did I answer all the questions about the milk? Before we go on. Okay, the important thing is a couple of little points. Number one, you need milk in your food storage. Well, most of us will want milk in our food storage because we like to make things that have milk in them. So you want to incorporate them in. What I found out um, what, um, is you want to make sure that you store your milk cool enough that it doesn't change the taste because when it, the taste changes, it doesn't taste very good. And so it also saves time and money if you have powdered milk in your storage rather than just buying milk, and let's face it, prices are going up at the grocery store now, so we like to save money on things. Um, for me, I used to only get the instant milk because I thought it tasted better, and tonight you're going to get to taste it so you can decide. But because you get really about twice as much for your, twice as much bang for your buck in getting the regular milk versus the instant milk, you have to just decide for yourselves if it's worth the extra money to do the instant. Instant dissolves in cold water instantly. When you use regular milk, you have to dissolve it, some of it in warm water first and then add cold water in. And that really needs to sit overnight. So the instant milk you can use right away. It's a little bit easier to make than the regular milk. But for because I get twice as much milk in a can and for the same price as I do the instant, it just cost-wise, it's a lot better, in my opinion, to get the regular than the instant. I do have both of them in my storage. But now that I've learned so much about it, I probably will only get regular milk from now when I buy. Just because I, I get a lot more. It's I think it's four pounds of milk in a can versus three pounds of milk in a can. And you make a lot more milk with the four pounds than you do with the three. Okay? That I think that answered everything. Okay, 